I'm going to get started. Thank you so much for joining me today, our, our wonderful panel today. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land of Australia and their continued connection with the land, waterways and communities, and pay my respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. Today, we are going to have some fun. I have assembled an amazing panel, some of the kindest and generous people in the world, in the industry, and people who are obsessed with habits. We're going to talk, we're going to explore, <laughs> we're going to explore Atomic Habits. Who here has read the book Atomic Habits? Yes. yes. So this is edutainment. Yeah. We're, we're, we're happy for you to heckle us. We're happy, happy for you to jump in and share your insights, okay? We, we want to learn together. So I um, have an amazing panel here today and I would like to throw to each of them to share who they are, where you're from, and what brings you to this conversation today of exploring atomic habits. Thanks, Heather. And thanks everyone for joining. So I'm Amar Latif. I'm the co-founder of Madwealth. Uh, we run a multidisciplinary accounting firm, bookkeeping, payroll, BAS advisory and, and tax uh, with my amazing business partner, Carla Hurrigan as, as well. Um, proud father of two, two boys, love sports. And uh, I have quite a um, addictive personality. So uh, habits have been really important for me because uh, when I implement a new habit, I tend to stick to it quite religiously. So it's actually after reading that book, it's transformed my life and that's what's uh, interested me. I'm Michelle Grisdale, Rainforest Bookkeeping. I'm a Baz agent sole practitioner, a little bit OCD for those of you that know me. And I can attest that he is totally addictive. Um, I, uh, this, this book was great because it it depicted exactly what I already did and how I can expand on that. So absolutely love it. And I'm with some of my favorite people. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Dan. I'm a co-host of the Two Drunk Accountants podcast. Uh, I'm also a co-owner co of Cats Accountants. Um, I'm on this panel because Heather asked me. <laughs> But also, I have terrible habits most of the time, and I strive constantly to improve them. And uh, I'm always inspired by, by all of the people up here, and so I just want to learn from them, really, and, and try and kick my chalky habit would be great. Um, didn't you do a podcast on Atomic Habits as a book nugget? Or was that not you? <laughs> no, that was me. <laughs> it was uh, one of my steps in the journey to be better. Uh, but yeah, no, Tim and I did a whole episode where we recapped this. So I'm excited to, to, see, what, to see what you all learned from it as well. Absolutely. So to, to clarify, in case I missed it there, Atomic Habits is a book by James Clear. It is a New York Times bestseller. And for the person who um, does some really good social media sharing today, we will give you a um, audible voucher to buy your own copy of the, <laughs> of the book. So only one, so go for it, everyone. He does, he narrates it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, okay, so James actually reads it in the audible book. So great, great, great prize to win. So we're here to talk about James's book. Um, and we've asked half, nearly 60% of the audience have absorbed the books. Um, we generally know that positive habits are a good thing. How did the book's explanation make you want to take habits seriously? So for, for, for me, I think uh, it introduced a practical way to actually implement good habits. So um, it's really easy to go out and say, these are bad habits, these are good habits. Uh, but it's not so easy to switch from a bad habit to, to a good habit. So one of the things, as an example, in the book he talks about habit stacking, uh, which I found really, really easy to implement um, for, for myself. So what habit stacking is, if there's a habit that you love doing, uh, you associate it with a habit that you want to get better at. Uh, so when this happens, I will do this. So as an example, uh, before I drink my first coffee for the day, I will do 10 minutes of meditation. Uh, 
um, so that before you can drink that first coffee, you're implementing the, the habit you want to build. For me, I found that uh, I was living quite a sedentary lifestyle. I was sitting down in the office all day. I go home, sit down with the family. Uh, when I uh, read, I'm sitting down and, and, and reading. Um, so one of my biggest passions is actually reading. I love, I love to read, read books. So that was the habit that I would always do every single day. And I would read maybe two hours to three hours a day. Um, so I created a rule straight after reading that, that book uh, as well about two two years ago and that was uh, I'm not allowed to read unless I walk at the same time um, so he walks more than 100,000 steps a week and he reads while not an audiobook an actual book with post-it notes all the time and and this is the thing like I think for me it's it's not even about like, trying to get the perfect routine because actually that habit wasn't perfect because what ended up happening because I read so much, um, I ended up walking like Forrest Gump of walking. So I was actually um, <laughs> what doing did you do about, the weekend. Walked. Yes, yeah, so I would like on a Saturday. I would walk six hours um, on my own, and then I would take my family out for a walk. So I was doing sixty thousand steps Saturday, sixty thousand steps Sunday, um, and then about twenty thousand steps Monday to Friday because I read so much. And then it became even bigger than that if I was reading a email for a client if I'm reading legislation or a case I would walk around the office um, and read that because I wasn't allowed to read unless I walk at the same time um, what did happen though is I lost about 25 kilos in nine months um, which was which was great but then what I what I realized was uh, the that wasn't the healthiest thing either because the excessive walking ended up meaning not just having to buy new shoes every two months which is what I had to do um, but it also meant that I uh, lost too much weight <laughs> and started losing a lot of muscle and got a lot weaker at, at, at the gym so um, then you make those 1% improvements so then as I started to see um, what uh, the outcome was what the result was I started to tweak it and improve it um, but I know personally that when I have a habit I stick to it religiously so Creating Omar good does not have a problem with motivation. Yeah. Motivation's not a problem. And that's part of what I enjoyed in the book is that it says motivation is overrated, but it's the environment that you set up for the habit. And so if you can set up an, ha an environment that's conducive to you achieving the habit, you're more likely to do it. So. Yeah, I, I love that a lot, but also that your habits are a reflection of your identity, not the other way around. So I, I really liked that if I can think about the kind of person or the goals I have or the, my purpose every day, what I'm doing at work, what I'm doing in my own life, then my habit should flow from that rather than the other way around. So that motivates me because I struggle with motivation. If, if there is bad food in the house, I'm eating it. Uh, so I've got to change my identity and what I want in my life to improve my habits. So do you buy individually packed Tim Tams? I just don't buy Tim Tams now, but uh, I do buy a, bucket, uh, sorry, a box of Paddle Pops because you get one serve. I'm not eating a whole tub of ice cream, just one serve. The little habits like that and little changes and tweaks make all the improvements. And it is interesting how you do something and it actually gives you um, a, a structure to rethink it and, and, and rethink what you're doing. And being the apps girl, um, I adopted an app called Habit Now, which is just a simple gamification of habits. You list what you want to do, you check them off every day, and um, I, one of my habits is to add a new habit every day. <laughs> so, so I'm kind of building out the structure of the perfect, perfect day, um, um, one 15 seconds at a time. So this, I think, is a really powerful statement. Every action that you take is a vote for the type of person you want to become. So do you have, I'm going to ask you, do you have any daily habits that you think others would benefit from adopting? Now I'm going to start with that one. So do you have any habits that others would benefit from adopting? I also recently read um, the Circadian Rhythm book. And one of the things is after, um, as you go into the evening, you shouldn't look at blue light because blue light um, stirs you up and, and, and makes you um, more alert. So in my own home, I have blue tack covering all the blue light in, 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 as you walk towards the bedroom, 
the blue tack covers all the blue light. And the hotel room I was in last night had brilliant blue light that I couldn't turn off at all. And I had this sort of infrastructure trying to cover the blue light in, in, in the bedroom. But that, that's kind of a tiny little habit has a massive impact on your sleep. I think one, one habit that is really easy to implement that, that, I've, that I do is um, before I take, go into a meeting with a client, answer a phone call, I would spend a minute just smiling. Uh, I think when you do that subconsciously, your whole body demeanor, the way you speak, the way you engage becomes a lot more positive. So before I, I, I try not to jump into a meeting rushed from a task that I was doing before because then the way I represent myself in that meeting could be stressed and anxious so changing that by before going in just smiling um, makes a big difference so um, something but when we, I knew I was going to do this panel I started really thinking about the habits that I do trying to figure out how they're leading to a better day and one thing I've been trying to do a lot was mindfulness and breathing exercises for 10 minutes every morning uh, but someone once told me recently that uh, how you go to sleep is how you wake up in the morning. So if you go to bed stressed, you're going to wake up stressed. If you go to bed with your mind busy, thinking about all these things, you're going to wake up that way. And really, you're starting on the back foot from the moment you wake up. So I've just moved it from in the morning to before I go to bed. And so before I go to sleep, I'm relaxed, I'm feeling calm and happy. And then when I wake up, that's how I feel. It was just a small little tweak, really benefited me. So I'm what James Clear calls proactively lazy. I know that I, you know, I can do lots of other things, but before I go to bed every night, I completely reset my house. I put the pillows where they need to go, I put the remotes where they need to belong, I put all the dishes in the dishwasher, so that when I wake up in the morning, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about cleaning anything. It's all put away already. My husband just thinks I'm crazy and on OCD, and yes, I am. But no, I'm, I'm proactively lazy, so I'm, I do the same with clients. I say, why would I want to go back to something four times? Do it once, do it now, move on. Awesome, awesome. And I do that as well yeah. if I'm not in bed too early. <laughs> Um, so I'd like to explore some of the sort of uh, um, 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 mind-blowing moments of the book. Habits reduce cognitive load and free up mental capacity. By making the fundamentals of life easier, you can create mental space needed for free thinking and creativity. How does that help you achieve your goals? So I think this probably, uh, for me, I'm not sure if you guys have read Getting Things Done um, by uh, Jim, was it Getting Things Done by Jim Collins? I believe? No, David Allen, um, which is another really, really good book. So for me, uh, as uh, Carl, Carl would know as well, um, I write down everything. Everything gets written down. Any thoughts, any ideas, any to-dos, any actions, um, any discussions, uh, could be even with friends. Um, because what that does is it's captured. It's captured in my notes app. I know that I don't have to think about it. So that frees my mindset to focus on what I need to be focused on at that moment. Otherwise, subconsciously, the mind retains it and it actually stresses that you're gonna forget that. Uh, so by writing it down, subconsciously, my mind is free because everything is captured. So that's one thing that helps me a lot um, is knowing that I've got it captured can you share with them the app that you told me about that does that for you? Yeah, so I use, if I'm on the go, so if I'm going on my long long walks, um, then I use the Drafts app, uh, because what that does is connects with my watch, um, as well as my, my phone, and you just talk to it. So um, you click on the Drafts app, you talk to it, it converts it to text, it then sits in my Drafts app. Um, if it's during a meeting, um, or I'm sitting down, then I use the Notes, the Native Notes app. Um, on, on, on my phone because then that syncs across all my devices and I've got it structured um, so that I can then go back to it and categorize it. So what I do is that's my capture tool, then I go back through all my notes and then organize them. What needs to go into carbon goes into carbon. What goes into reminders goes into reminders. So then there's a process. Now I actually review that every week. So every week I go through all of my notes and then organize them to where they need to go um, and I do that each each Sunday, so there's a really good process for me um, that that works. So that's one tip I would 
do is if you want to free up your mind, write everything down. Um, you'll be more present with your thoughts. So the message here is don't take notes, befriend Amar. <laughs> Well, like even, <laughs> even for yesterday's session, I took about 15 pages of notes just from the sessions that we had uh, yes, yesterday. Um, but. So I, my, my whole life is about eliminating friction points so that I can um, achieve more with less effort. And it looks like I'm doing a lot of work, but I just make sure that I have everything planned so I can do that. I do the same thing with my clients. So I teach them that if you take a photo, that means there's no more friction points in providing something to me. They take the photo, it goes into the Dex app, it goes in the accounting system, I deal with it, they can throw it away, their car doesn't get messy, their wife isn't get upset. So it, it's just about changing those friction points and making it all so that it's achievable so that you can actually do it. I do have an answer for this, but Amar, I just realized something you said earlier, that you go on these six hours walks, you used to, and then you realized that you were weaker when you went to the gym. You were still going to the gym after doing six hour walks? <laughs> yeah, I was still going. And, and not only that, because, and again, I need to get better at that because once I have a habit, I tend to go to the extreme. I can't find the balance. So I also at the same time said, I didn't like what I was, the way I was eating. Um, so uh, instead of saying, I'm going to order a salad for lunch instead of having Chinese, I stopped eating. So um, I just said, right, I'm not having lunch and I don't have breakfast. I'm not having lunch. So I was walking. 60,000 steps, not yeah. having lunch, and going to the gym. So that's like yeah. the, the opposite end of the spectrum, like too far of habits. Too, 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 far. too far. And that's where habits actually help me, by having good habits, it helps me find that balance because everything is, is scheduled. So once I have habit after habit after habit, it gives me balance in, in my life as, as well. I think that sort of leads into my answer to this question, which is for me, it's just, you know, I, like everyone, you have anxious days, you get stressed, your mind's running around a million things. It's just getting it out of your head. But instead of writing a million notes, which sounds really good, I should start doing more of that. Uh, it's just more about making sure that I've scheduled and planned ahead so I know that there's a time for me to worry about that thing. It's setting aside a time where it's like, I don't need to think about this because I'm doing this at this point instead. So it's just out of my mind, I'm not worrying about it, going about my day on a walk, and I know when I get home and I sit down and eat breakfast, my habit is to look at my emails then and I go through my things then. So it's like, don't worry about it. You will worry about it then. I might just say when you do plan your habits, so the good behaviors, habits are systems, they're processes. It's how you want to live your life with intention. So when you plan your habits for the day, you're effectively setting what's important for you because the habits isn't just work habits it could be habits that you do with your kids habits that you do with your um, spouse habits that you do with your family so we all have these different roles that we play so habits set how we prioritize how we spend our time it becomes a lot easier when they're scheduled for you to say no to things that then would uh, mean you can't implement that habit so uh, you get more control of your life once you've set your routine um, and you say no to things that don't align to your priorities. Where if I've got no habits and someone says, let's do this right now, it's like, okay, because I don't have a strategy on what my day should look like. First question, he, first thing he always says to me is, what's the plan, can we walk? Let's go. Um, <laughs> so a uh, thing for, um, for Dan is that because I listen to Two Drunk Accountants podcast religiously, um, and I might have an episode on it as well on going paperless, just shameless plug, so, um, is that, so tell me about your new morning routine. Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> uh, so pretty much because of this panel, I, I, as I said before, I've been rehashing that morning routine. And the funny thing is I've realized is it actually starts the night before. If I, I'm learning more and more that it's all about that planning, that my habits for planning make the rest of my time better and make the rest of my habits more effective. So uh, it all starts with washing the dishes. That's where my morning starts the night before. Uh, coffee cup ready to go in the morning because I'm a terrible morning person. I wake up and I'm just, if I have to wash a coffee cup, I'm not having coffee. Yeah, <laughs> just, I'm too tired. But I get up, I have my coffee, go for a walk along the beach for 3Ks, come home, 10 minutes of mindfulness, cold shower, 
and it takes about an hour for the whole thing to happen and then I'm like, good to go for the day, positive mental attitude, plans, ready to go. But I've been slowly building on that over time. So, so yes, that's proactively lazy. <laughs> you get 10 more minutes in the morning. I have a post-it note in my shower to suggest I should have a cold shower and I haven't had one yet. <laughs> but I'd like you to all get in the habit of uh, listening to the Two Drunk Accountants podcast. It is the Hamish and Andy podcast <laughs> for the accounting industry. So I'll turn to Hamish for the, for the next question. Correct. Um, <laughs> Um, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. Mm. Why was this directed at me, Heather? <laughs> so I could call you Hamish. <laughs> no, that's absolutely true. Um, I think you achieve your goals just by having the habits that reflect your identity. It's kind of what Amar was saying before, where, you know, if, if you have the habits set in your life and you're achieving those things and you're doing those routines every single day, they're going to build to the end result anyway. So you don't need to sit there thinking about, well, I want to achieve this, this, and this. It's I need to do these little small tasks and that builds to what I'm trying to achieve eventually. And that's the same in business as well. Small little business goals, each little action every single day builds to the result that you're trying to achieve. You know, When we do business planning with clients, it's, it's not about, well, we start with what's the big picture? What are you trying to achieve? What's the end goal? But we do that more just to give them a sense of direction and clarity. But then what they go away with is a lot of very small actions and targets. It's not about, all right, your plan is to double the size of your business. Go do it. Mm. That doesn't work. They're not, they don't know how. They don't know what they're going to do. Every day you're going to be distracted by new things. But if it's every day you need to do these three things and over time that builds to that result, well, that's a lot more effective than just setting lofty goals. It's in the book, it's called the two-minute rule. You can do anything for two minutes. If you do two minutes of a good thing, then the next day or the next month or the next year, you add two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, and you just make that two minutes so that you've won for two minutes a day if that's all it is. Absolutely, and I think uh, the goals, goals set the destination, right? So goals set where you want to end up, uh, one, which is very important. Uh, once you've set the goal, the habits actually determine how you get there. It's the process, it's the system. So there's no point setting a goal if you're not going to then talk about what's the process, the systems and the habits that I need to be doing from today in order to hit those goals. And it's actually, once you've set those goals, it's more important then to focus on the habits, the systems, the process on a day-to-day -day basis than the goals, because that's what's gonna get you to those goals. And it could be, small little things like when it comes to systems like i'll give you two two small little things and that's why it's atomic habits because they're micro habits that you do repeatedly on a routine basis so as an example facebook social media um, facebook can be really really good or it could be a massive time waster um, there's a lot of uh, uh, we're part of a lot of facebook groups as well so what, what i do is um on my i only jump onto facebook on my ipad um, and I've got it set up so that with the iPad, you've got a split screen. So when I click on the Facebook app, it opens automatically with my notes app. Subconsciously, the intention is there that I'm here to learn, which is what I use Facebook for. I go through all the different Facebook pages. There's a lot of information. I then can write things down. That trigger, just having the notes app next to it, sets the intention that I'm here to learn. So just setting it up so that when your Facebook opens, it opens with your notes app, is really good. Also, when you turn off your phone, uh, it, when you turn it on again, it opens with the last uh, uh, closed app. So what I do is before I close my phone, no matter what app I'm on, I open the iBooks app, which is the, what I use to read, read books. So as soon as I open my phone, it opens with iBooks. Uh, so then it, instead of going on Facebook or social media, I'm like, actually, no, I'd rather keep continuing reading this book. I do that as well. So I have my Chrome so that it opens all of my different tabs. And there's a lot, you know, we're dealing with Dex and Ignition. We're dealing with Expert. We're dealing with Zero. We're dealing with everything. But I don't have it open Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, none of those. I have to physically go and do that. Otherwise, I will just see a shiny new toy and see something Nicole posted for the day and what day it is. And I won't proceed. And so I've lost 20 to 40 minutes of my day. So um, for those of you who don't know, I've written 10 books and uh, when the, all the note taking and the curation and the sorting and the surfacing of the information comes out of you, Amar, 
you'll all be able to go out and buy his book because I'm sure it's in there <laughs> one day because I, I think a very much similar similar to that in that I was just note taking as, as a way of learning and then everyone else needs to know this too. <laughs> um, so pulling this back into the accounting and bookkeeping industry, as part of your consultation process, do you talk to your clients about the process of adopting habits, habit stacking or following checklists? Absolutely. So I think from, from our perspective, when we engage with our clients, when we do our advisory meetings with the clients, it's actually not just limited to financials. It's a relationship. So we, we work as mentors with them. We work in partnership with them. So we talk about everything. Sometimes we do talk about lifestyle. We do talk about habits. Sometimes we do talk about their relationships with their spouses. Sometimes we do talk about their own priorities, their vision, their purpose in life, if they're lacking some um, sense of meaning or what is all this for. So I think when it comes to our relationships with, with our clients, we bring our full selves to, to that. Um, and we don't have to have all the answers. We just come with our own unique experiences and uh, expertise in whatever we, we know. And a lot of the times, to be, to be honest, uh, I tend to talk about in my advisory meetings the latest book that I've just uh, read. So if I've read Getting Things Done by David Allen, I'll be talking about, right, how do we capture your thoughts? How do we organize your actions? If I'm reading uh, Dare to Lead by Renee Brown, then I'm talking about being more vulnerable with your team, building a culture, being more honest. It it's, tends to whatever we start to learn day to day, or if Carla and I are talking about asynchronous communication, then I'd be talking to, about that with my, with my clients as well. I think building on that, research is showing more and more the connection between your own or the business owner's health, physical health, mental health, sleep, relationships, family, everything, and the success of that business. Um, we all know if we're going through tough times or if you're not feeling well, you're not going to be making decisions at your best. You're not going to be being as productive as you need to be. So really, a lot of the time, and, and our passion in our business is all about trying to bridge that gap between what people's lifestyles are trying to be and, and what their business can actually provide for them. So there is a little bit of a conversation around, well, what are you doing for yourself? And so in business plans, I've started including lifestyle KPIs. So it's like, yeah, here's all your business KPIs, but what else are you doing? Uh, what's, what's important to you in your life to make sure you can achieve that and getting the balance that you're after? And, and it's going to be a measure of, are you doing well at that or not? Um, the best one I've heard uh, was surfs per week. So that was one of my favorite measures. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, so we do talk about those habits as well as obviously the business habits around cash flow, the habits around trying to get those additional uh, income in or, or whatever it is that they're trying to achieve. For me as a BAS agent, and I work with a lot of tradies, my whole job is to eliminate friction points. So you could, I make it as easy as possible for them to work with me. Of course, the first thing is, you know, you don't start the vehicle unless you've taken the photo of the receipt. Um, and things like e-sign, so that it, getting them to e-sign means they don't have to print it out, they don't have to find a pen to sign it, they don't have to file it, they don't have to leave it in the truck and get it lost. It's done, filed, delivered, no paper, no fuss, no pen, make it easy. How amazing is that? Don't start the car until you've taken a photo for your receipt, okay? That's the one thing you take away from account text. That's just transformational for some, for some um, clients out there. And um, I have now a controversial question that the panel, some of the panel didn't want me to ask. <laughs> so you, could, you don't have to answer it, but how many of you track the hours that you sleep? Awesome, awesome. I know that my, my husband wakes me every morning. Well, I wake him because I wake at four, but when he wakes and tells me how many hours he sleeps, loves it. Every single day he tells me how many hours he sleeps. Even when I'm away, he texts me because he's so proud if he gets a good night's sleep. So impactful and, and, and it's so important. See, that stresses me out. If I, seriously, like, I mean, Heather's the best roommate I've ever been away with because I get home and she's just waking up. It's perfect. But worrying about how many hours I sleep, you know, I might go two and get up and go to the toilet, and go two and get up and go to the toilet or, you know, whatever, but it stresses me out. I can function on two hours or I can function on 10, but I really do not want to keep track of it. This question's an outrage. Uh, 
No, I, I sometimes track it, sometimes not. I think you, you were the one who loved far. the question. Yeah. You were like <laughs> fighting for the question. I actually just want to know. I'm like, how do you track your? I'm assuming you track your sleep. Yes. I track everything. I, that's what I assumed. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. yeah. That's so. You're my yeah. <laughs> and I think for me, how many steps have you done today? Oh, nothing, because I've just been no, here. No, no. Um, I have done 1,849, so... But we share the steps on an app together and compete against each other. I gave up after... Yeah, I it, came is it a competition? It. Yeah, I, I was just winning that. <laughs> but, but I think, so, for, for me, it's all about 1% improvements, right? So those incremental improvements, continuous improvement. You can only really make those 1% improvements when you track it. Um, tracking is data, it's insights. It's the same reason why we prepare correct accounts, why we prepare financials. We want to use the data to give advice. So for Measuring me- Measuring is changing. I capture data in my own life so that I could try to make those 1% improvements. So I do track my sleep. I also have an app called Waterminder. I track how much water I consume. And if I'm not drinking enough water, <laughs> it pings me on my watch to say, drink more water. See, my habit is that every time I get up from my desk or I change my desk from standing to sitting, I refill my water. I drink like yep. eight liters of water a day religiously, which is great. But for me with habits, it's not about saying, I want to walk more, I want to lose weight. It's like, what do you picture yourself looking like if you do that habit, right? So, you know, I visualize my office as being beautifully clean and tidy and organized, right? So that's what I do. I use those habits to, to make that happen. If I, I can't go to bed, if there's things on my desk, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and forget my hours. So I'm keen to, to, to bring some technology into the conversation because I do love my apps and I do love my technology. And I'm going to ask, um, sort of, what are some habits that you or your clients track and, and how are the habits tracked? And I do think that um, when we uh, unpack what the habit needs to be, is very often the technology can actually adopt, absorb, and actually do it for us um, and, and freeing us up um, completely. So as an example, uh, we were talking about the requirements that we have of clients to give us documentation. That can be built into the Ignition app engagement letter and um, they are signing that they're agreeing to provide you that data or that information at a particular time. And you need to, if you do that, make sure the whole team is aware of that and encourage that. So it, it's, it can be built in to the technology. So it's, it's completely, I'm all about freeing up my uh, mental clutter so I can just think, think, think. <laughs> so what else, what other thoughts do you have? Um, how, how, what are some of the habits you're tracking with your clients and how are you doing it? So, <clears throat> I'll go first. So, um, I don't like to be a nag. It's just something I really don't. You know, you used to do it with your kids. So, now I just, I don't, I don't go there with that. I love apps that nag for me. I love, like I use Expert because Expert tells me, right, it's Tuesday morning. I have, I have 14 payrolls to do. Nobody has to remind me. I don't have to write it down. It just says, right, these are all the ones I have to do. Thursday morning, same thing. I, it tells me, right, this is what you have to do today. I, my staff are all allocated those tasks. I don't have to say, here's your day. It's all done by expert already. And Dex reminds them if they haven't given me a receipt or if they haven't um, provided, if they pro provided me an FPOS receipt and an actual receipt. Okay. Uh, so, is it more for clients or for us? Whatever, you can take it. Like so for, for, for me, I use, um, and it could be basic systems. Like for me, it becomes, it is an identity. So for me, it becomes almost like a, a game. As an, as, as an example, um, my walking. So I've done 10,000 steps every single day for the past two and a half years. If I don't do 10,000 steps today, today's gonna to be the first day in two and a half years that I don't do 10,000 steps. Today's not gonna be that day. I've invested too much time on it. So um, I've note got to, to Carla, book the hotel much further away <laughs> when we go on exhibitions. Also, say when it comes to, to the gym, um, I record it in Excel. So sometimes it's not a sophisticated system. I just record in Excel. If I don't go every day, there's gonna be a gap in that Excel schedule. I don't like gaps. So I now go, I went from never going to the gym to going six to seven days a week. Um, and that's because of the way the Excel 
that I've set it up on the schedule, there's going to be a gap. So just by using systems like that, it helps create that incentive to keep going. Um, and that's, that's how I do it. Yeah, I think <laughs> building on that, it, it needs to be easy. And if sometimes you can go too far with tracking too much, and if you've got to go find the stats, you're never going to lose adding friction to the habit then. Uh, so just as easy as possible. I have a watch. It tracks a lot of the, my lifestyle stuff already. I don't need an app to track surfs per week. Did I do it or not? Um, but when it comes to work habits, then yeah, it's, it's all about the habits. We, we work with cash flow systems with a lot of our clients and it, there's no tracker for that apart from literally every fortnight we meet and we, we do a thing. We do transfers, we go through it with them. And that becomes a habit that just builds to their results. So it's less about having to track it every single little thing and more about just did you do the habit or did you not do the habit. And some of the reporting systems auto build and email the client the actual report or the reminder to go in and look at the dashboard. And a note to developers, I want to know when I do something great. I don't want to know when I've been really slack. I want to know any changes, positive, positive, positive. I don't want to know how that I've missed four days. So at New Year's Eve, it's really easy to define habits and stick to them while we're on the holidays. But how do we stick to them through the hustle and bustle and challenges? How did you stick to them today when you came to a conference? So there's a running joke in my friendship group uh, for years that once a year I call myself New Dan. <laughs> New Dan starts today, everybody. And yeah, exactly, multiple times a year. <laughs> but recently, my habits have stuck. And I think it's because you bring it all back down to that identity piece and who you're trying to be and, and your habits being a reflection of that rather than trying to change who you are through forcing yourself to do something. So really, I like getting up early and going for a walk. It makes me feel good. I like being the person that is an early bird. Uh, so therefore, I'm just going to get up because that's who I am now. Apparently, I'm new, Dan. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's less of <laughs> It's just more about trying to reflect who you are rather than forcing yourself to do something that doesn't feel right. So I still have a glass blackboard in my office. And every year, I write a new word on it. Last year, my word was to live because I just felt like we were in limbo for so long. We needed to live. This year, my word is focus. So rather than trying to do a thousand things, I pick a few things that I want to focus on and I stick to those. That's an achievable habit for me. I can focus. It might be focusing on Pokemon, but <laughs> <laughs> it might be focused on something else, but I'm focusing. So for, for me, I think it's less so on New Year's resolution. It's a case of reviewing my lifestyle. So I'm always looking at improving. Um, so I always review my habits, my lifestyle. So I totally agree with, with Dan. Habits are a reflection of your identity. So each habit should be a vote of the sort of person you want to be. Not necessarily where you are currently, uh, where you want to be. So do my daily habits, do my daily practices reflect who I want to be. Um, so if I look up to to someone and someone that I admire and uh, what are their habits. So as an example, um, if I want to be, I want to write a book rather than setting a goal that I want to sign a book deal um, so that I could publish this book by end of this year, I would set the habit of I want to write one page every day. Uh, I focus on the daily practice, the lifestyle. My identity is then as a writer. So I focus on my identity. As a writer, I will write one page every book, every, every, every day. Is Amaz everyone's hero or just mine? <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> Amar is amazing. Um, yeah. And uh, there's a reason his letter starts with A. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. We are coming towards the end of this session, but this is a community session. If you've got any questions that, or heckles or anything you'd like to contribute, I can run over there with a microphone or you can run up here or I can repeat it. Is that, are they going? Um, hi, just the, uh, <laughs> the Hamish of the two drunk accounts here. No, actually, apparently Andy. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or a, a stab. But um, I just wanted to say, I think Amar, is, he's like, it, the book talks about an ice cube 
and you are the melted ice cube. <laughs> Which is a compliment. I'll take it. Because as the ice cube is melting, at minus 18, an ice cube is frozen. At minus 10, there's been a lot of change happen. The ice cube is still frozen. At minus one degrees, it is still frozen, but it's changed 17 degrees. You have to commit to the change. And that's Amar, he's the, he's the melted ice cube because he committed through to when it got to zero degrees and it started melting and the change was embodied in him. So yeah, well done, mate. It's awesome. That's why Tim's the Andy of the podcast and not the Hamish. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, Amar, this is for you. <laughs> Please, please, please tell us that you have some bad habits. Uh, <laughs> Do, you know COVID, he didn't drink? Do you know that before COVID, he didn't drink? After meeting all of us, he drinks. <laughs> that's right. Well, and so that's, that's a good point. So again, it comes to, um, I'm not going to say I'm an extreme drinker, uh, <laughs> but I went on when I was, I think, 24, yeah, 20, 23, I went on a top deck tour around Europe. And I drank way too much. So on, I've got a twin, twin brother. Um, on the plane ride back home from, from Europe, um, we both made the agreement that we're not going to drink anymore. Uh, so we didn't drink. My brother lasted two months. I lasted 15 years. So I didn't drink because I said, I'm not going to drink. And that's the way my mind works. When I say, I'm not going to do this, it just doesn't do it. Or if I say, I'm going to do this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. So um, there was no other reason then I just said, I'm not going to do it. Then I partnered with Carla and started drinking. And all, <laughs> it all went downhill from there. He was with us. But in, term, in terms of, I think I do, I think my bad habits are more so that I can't moderate the habit. That when I have a habit, I take it to, to, to the extreme. But I did have, um, in a previous firm that I worked with, um, in order to connect, they played this game, this game on, their, on, on the phone. And on that phone, there was a lot of chat. Um, and I found, because uh, I tend to be quite competitive, I became competitive on that game. So this is going back maybe five, five years ago. Um, when I review my habits, um, I realized that whilst the social element was good in keeping touch with my ex-colleagues, I was spending too much time on that app and it wasn't productive. So I deleted the app. Um, so I, I always review my habits and I eliminate what I doesn't add value to, to my life and doesn't align with where I find I can be the most productive. Um, and then I try to replace that with a better habit. And I know, I know it sounds like Amar is a total workaholic, but he's actually not. Yeah, workaholic, yes, but workaholic, no. Um, he schedules, he's so generous with his time, he actually schedules this time in with his work colleagues and his networking friends and his community group first and works around that. And that just shows, you know, his, his bad habits are good habits too. Amar missed going to the gym once. He's horrible. <laughs> Let's get the weights out. <laughs> That, that will be the t-shirt next next conference. Um, so if anyone else does have a, 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 a query, just sort of wave your hand and we'll come over with it. Oh, we do. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Mark from Own Your Mark. Hi, Michelle. Uh, look, a, a really interesting discussion, guys. Thank you. And, and um, I'm, I kind of see a, a line in the sand between habitual and habitual tracking and and I'm interested in the panelists view on how much you see tracking so and when I say that I mean habitual being the habit of when I get up from my desk I have a drink of water when before I start the vehicle I take a photo versus tracking things to ensure I'm doing it so how much do you see tracking as a carrot versus a stick so how much is the 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 tracking to say yeah I'm doing a good job versus uh, I'm not doing a good job and I need to enforce this I think that I think that really depends on who you're asking and, the, and it, because it is definitely is different for me you know I do the habits religiously and don't even realize that I'm doing it but I don't track that whereas Amara is going to track that right so it just depends on the person but I do the habit 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 but don't know how many times I think 
for me, you know, as an accountant, I love numbers. I love tracking, I love seeing things. Not as much as Amar apparently, but I think it really is about when you measure it, you change it, I said that before, but that's how you start it. That's how you, I think in my mind, all right, I wanna do 10,000 steps a day, so I'm gonna start measuring that. But once it becomes a habit, I don't need to measure it anymore because I'm just doing it. Um, so as long as I use it to start the habit and then once it's ingrained in me, then I don't need to track it in my mind anymore. Everything gets tracked. <laughs> Everything, every time gets tracked. This has been such a fabulous discussion. Thank you so much to the audience. Thank you so much to our panelists. Oh, no, 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 they've not finished yet. <laughs> They're not finished yet. So I would like you to, sorry, I just, all that clapping, take it on board, but I'd like you to share with um, everyone who's here today, one thing, key takeaway that you think they should take away with them and how can they get in contact with you? And I really encourage you all to connect with these people on LinkedIn. We'll put a post up straight away afterwards, continue the conversation, continue, the, continue asking questions. But um, what's one key takeaway from today? I would say when you're trying to implement a new habit, make it two minutes. Just start with starting the habit by doing it for two minutes. So if you want to start walking, walk 2,000 steps a day. Walk 1,000 steps. Go for a walk for 10 minutes a day. Sorry. For me, 2,000 is nothing. But So say, say, say uh, go for a walk for 10 minutes every day. Instead of saying, I'm going to walk for an hour and a half every day, I'm going to walk 10 minutes every, every day. So just make it simple. And I think sometimes we get into analysis paralysis so um, before I start going to the gym I'm going to look at what protein shake and which is the best brand and who which personal trainer should I go to and I'm going to look at every workout session on YouTube and by that stage it's been two years time and you haven't entered the gym so just if I'm going to say I'm going to start going to the gym then just turn up at the gym and just do whatever you can I mean Carla uh, I was telling Carla the other day um, when I started going to the gym I actually had no idea what I was doing so I injured myself a lot I would watch other people do it and then I would be like okay so you lift this and it goes up, and up, up something um, but just start uh, so make it easy start make it two minutes and then every day improve it by one percent uh, and then that's the compounding effect of atomic habits make the habits you want to do achievable and make the bad habits impossible. So if you want to go for a walk, put your running shoes beside the bed or at the front door before you go to bed, right? Um, if you want to have uh, get up earlier, get everything ready the night before. The bad habits, one by the Tim Tams in the individual packet so that you don't eat the whole thing. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's adding friction to the bad habits and, and start with the easiest habits to change first. That's, you know, b being lazy again uh, and, and ensuring that you're just doing the one that's easiest to change first and then you build a momentum and add little habits every single time. I um, didn't mention, but I um, ha my habit tracker has all the vitamins that I'm supposed to take for various reasons. And I've been taking them um, really well for like the last three months. And I now have the strongest nails in my life. So that was thank you to D3, <laughs> um, and, and that has been quite amazing. But now, thank you very much to my, my panel, my amazing panel for this fabulous discussion. Thank you so much to everyone who, who joined us today. Thank you to Go Cardless, the Buzz Labs, for hosting us today. We really appreciate it. It's been so much fun. Continue the conversation. We're here for you, okay?